Hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. And today we have a really, really fun video. We are sewing and drafting a transformer cardigan. That's right, <laughs> a cardigan that you can wear tied up front, tied as a sweater and also as a top. And I think it's so really cool to have a piece that you can wear in so many different ways, especially for springtime when you're not necessarily sure what weather is holding in store for you. So I'm really excited about this one. I am in love with the one that I made. It's a little bit of a brighter color than I'm used to. So I'm really excited to have some color in my wardrobe as well. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So before we get started with the drafting, I would like to let you know that the base for this cardigan is going to be very similar to the bow cardigan that we did a couple weeks ago and to the button top that we did a little bit further than that. So really we're taking the same pattern and I know a lot of you made it. I know a lot of you made some really beautiful pieces out of that pattern. I received so many beautiful pictures. Thank you so much for sending those to me. So I know you have those patterns and this is going to be a modified version, not as long, a little different elements, but still we're working on the same base because if you already have it and you love it, why not use it again, right? We are going to start with two simple measurements for this pattern, one for the length of the garment, the other one for the width. Now for the length of the garment, grab your measuring tape, position it on the center back neckline and drop it as long as you would like it to be. Now record that measurement. For the width of your cardigan, you're going to take the largest full measurement of the following three, bust, waist, or hips. Now, since my cardigan does not go past my hips and ends up just a little bit below the waist, I'm going to use either bust or waist measurement. My largest measurement is going to be bust, therefore I'm going to take one quarter of that for my pattern. Once you have both of those measurements on your pattern paper, let's go ahead and continue making it into a rectangle. Now at the top of the rectangle, let's mark half of the width of your back neckline. For me, as you guys know, I always take three and a half inches. You can take whatever width you would like. Just remember, start smaller because you can always cut away if needed. Now from that three and a half inch point mark, take one inch down and from the edge of the rectangle, take one inch down. Now connect those two points with a straight line. That is going to be your new shoulder line. Now with a dash curved line, mark your back neckline. For the next step, we're going to mark the width of the sleeve down from the shoulder line. Now the width of my sleeve is going to be eight inches and I'm going to go through the pattern making steps for the sleeve and this part of the bodice a little bit faster since we already done exactly the same thing in the last two videos as well. So if you're not sure, I will leave those links for you in the info box below. It will be really easy for you to follow and understand what I'm talking about as soon as you watch the other videos as well. Once you have marked the width of your sleeve on the bodice, go ahead and extend the shoulder line by half an inch and then extend the bottom point of the sleeve by half an inch as well. Do connect those points together and then curve it in a little bit so that way it creates a really nice organic look on the bodice. After that, the back of your cardigan is ready. You can go ahead and cut it out and do the following markings. Let's make sure that we cut it on the fold so you see the fold marking. Mark the direction of the stretch of the fabric and also that it is a back piece. And after that, let's move on to the sleeve. For that, I'm going to start with the length of the sleeve first. For me, that's going to be 18 inches and that is also going to be a bishop sleeve. Now again, if you're not sure how to measure the length of the sleeve for this particular shape and design, go ahead and reference to those two videos that I mentioned earlier that will help you greatly as there I explain in great detail how to measure the length of the sleeve. Now for the width of the sleeve, it's going to be exactly the same as the opening of the sleeve or the armhole on our back bodice. So go ahead and copy that and then just continue making that into a rectangle the same way as we did for our back bodice piece. 
So now we need to make sure that our sleeve and our back bodice are under the same angle so that way everything looks really nice and neat. You can always leave it as it is, however I do prefer this method that I'll show you in a second. Go ahead and take your sleeve, lay it on top of the back piece of the cardigan, make sure that everything is under the same angle and make sure that the top points of the edge of the sleeve and the edge of the armhole align. Now through the sleeve piece you can see the bottom piece of the bodice. Mark the bottom of the armhole on the actual sleeve, copy all the markings and then cut out the new sleeve for your cardigan. Now after that, go ahead and take the back piece of the bodice of your cardigan, copy that on a fresh piece of paper, and we're going to build out the front part of your cardigan really quickly. First step would be to mark the depth of the front neckline, so to speak. That's where the front panels overlap and create that beautiful V shape. For me, that's going to be 7 inches. For the next step, we're going to extend the bottom hem of the front piece and that's going to be exactly the same value as the width of the back piece. Now raise this end by about 2 inches, you can choose any value that you would like, but that's where the ties are going to attach. And then let's connect all of these three points together. If you do get an angle like this, not a big deal, all is good. Go ahead and curve it in and smooth it out so that way it looks really nice when the garment is done. And that is it for the front of the cardigan. Don't forget to mark the direction of the stretch and you are ready to cut it out. Now let's talk about a fabric for a second. You will need one to one and a half yards. It all depends on your size, how wide is your fabric, and also how long you want your ties to be. So there's a lot of things that go into it. So definitely make your pattern first and then determine how much fabric do you need when you go to the fabric store. Now I use double brushed poly, which is a stretch fabric. And I would recommend for you to use something with a stretch for this pattern. You can use something that has no stretch whatsoever, like linen or cotton or cotton blends. However, you need to make sure that you have enough ease in your pattern so that way you can get it on and off of yourself. The fact that it has ties, of course, makes it a little bit easier to use non-stretch fabrics, but I would recommend for you to go with a stretch fabrics first and then once you have the taste of how it actually looks on you, you can proceed with non-stretch fabrics. Now other fabrics that you might choose for this project would be medium weight knits, medium weight jerseys, or also some ribbing. Anything that is really nice and stable to work with, has a nice stretch to it, and has a really nice drape as well. All right, the pattern is done, so let's get on to cutting the fabric. Now here's the thing, you will need to cut the back piece on the fold, and then you will need to cut two pieces of the front for the left side and for the right side. Now remember, all of the patterns that I draft in my videos I make without seam allowances, so you will need to add seam allowances either on a paper pattern before you cut your fabric or as you cut your fabric, which is the way that I do them. I personally like my seam allowances quite narrow, so I'll go for a quarter of an inch. You can do whichever way is best for you. Remember guys, if I can do this, then you can do this as well. So definitely don't be scared. Everything is really achievable. You can definitely tackle this project. For the first step, take your back pattern piece and your front pattern pieces, put them right sides together at the shoulder seams, pin them in place, and then sew them. I am using a serger for this project, however, you can use sewing machine with the same success. Just make sure that you're using a straight stitch such as zigzag. Once your shoulder seams are done, let's go for the step number two, and that is inserting the sleeve. Find the center of the sleeve and pin it right sides together to the bodice of your cardigan. Make sure that the center of the sleeve aligns with the shoulder seam of your cardigan. Pin everything in place and then sew it. For the third step, we're going to sew the side seam and a sleeve all in one go. For that, you will need to fold your garment right sides together, align the sleeve seams and side seams on front and back, and then pin it and sew it together.
Now let's finish the sleeves and for that you will need to make the cuff first. For the cuff measurement you will measure the full width of your wrist and then of course you will measure how long you would like your cuff to be. Multiply that by two since you will need to fold your cuff in half. Then sew the short ends and your cuff is ready. Then take your sleeve and on the very edge of the sleeve do a gathering stitch so that way you can then gather your sleeve to match the width of your cuff. Once that is done, place the sleeve inside of your cuff, right sides together, put it in place and then sew it. For the next step we will cut and sew the neck band and the bottom band. For that you will need to measure two things. Number one, the whole neckline from one triangle all the way up to the back neckline all the way down to the other side of the triangle. That will be your neck band and the bottom hem from one side all the way to the other side. Once you know the length that you need, go ahead and cut your bands. I have cut my bands at two and a half inches wide, which together with the seam allowances, once folded, will give me about one inch once the neck band is actually attached. For the bottom band, I'm going to attach it just as it is, folded in half and right sides together to the actual bottom hem of the cardigan. For the neck band, I'm going to cut it in half and then at that center point, I'm going to do a little snip like this, which will be half an inch deep. That will make it a little bit easier for me to shape the neck band to the neckline of my cardigan. Now go ahead and sew those ends that you just snipped Fold the neck band in half and align that seam that you just made with a center back of your cardigan. And then attach the neck band all the way around. You should have a result like this. And now on to the final stage of this cardigan, which is the ties. For the width of the ties, you will need to measure the ends of your cardigan, those ends that you will be attaching those ties to, and multiply that by two. So each of the cardigan ends is four inches wide. So my tie needs to be eight inches wide because we'll be folding it in half. For the length of the ties, I took quarter of my widest measurement that we used for this pattern, which was nine inches. So each of the ties will be eight inches wide and nine inches long. Then I sewed it with pointy ends like this, turned it right side out, and now we're going to attach it. Now instead of just sandwiching everything together and sewing it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew just one side of the tie to the end of my cardigan and then I will neatly pack it inside and then with a hand stitching needle I will finish that seam so that way I have no raw edges where the cardigan and the tie meets. Obviously you don't have to do it the way that I do it. I'm just sharing with you my process but you can do whichever way is best for you. Now remember, you are the master of your project. So if you don't like the bishop sleeve, or maybe you don't like the way I do the ties, or maybe the length, you would like to change it up a bit. Absolutely, go for it. I do have plenty of tutorials that you can grab some ideas from and maybe mix and match. For sure, why not? Remember, use your creativity to fit this pattern to your style. So that way you would make something that you would truly love and wear. Wasn't that easy? That was pretty easy, right? Well, thank you so much for watching. I have some other really cool tutorials right over here and then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much, guys. Happy sewing.